Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. And couple number one. Hi, I'm Nicola. This is my long-suffering friend, Vicky, and we're from Newcastle. Couple number two. I'm Seb. This is my above-average girlfriend, Ems, and we're from Cardiff. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Emer. I'm here with my partner, Tom, and we're both students studying in Glasgow. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Arjan. This is my brother, Maz, and we're from Sutton. And these are today's contestants. Thank you all very much indeed. A very warm welcome to the show. It's lovely to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He really does his homework. I don't know why he left school 35 years ago. It's my pointless friend, it's Richard. Hi, yeah. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. When we were at school, yeah. we never had to do homework. These kids today, they're endlessly. Oh, they're endless tested homework. every year, they yeah. got this homework. I never did any. <sighs> I mean, I did none. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. I don't know what that tells us. Anyway, hello, everybody. How, uh, we've got three pairs back for their second yeah, shows. Yeah, I spotted uh, that. Vicky and Nicola, knocked out in the first round last time. <laughs> I'll see a bit more of you uh, this time, I'm sure. Seven, Emily, head-to-head, -head, so that was very nicely done. And Marjan and Maz, round two. And we welcome Ema and Tom. Uh, we keep giving away the jackpot. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Well, listen, maybe we'll give it away again today. Let's hope. Simon and Nancy won the jackpot last time. Today's jackpot is therefore starting off back at £1,000. There it is. Uh, which means, if everyone's ready, let's just play pointless. Remember, it will always be the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated, so your route through to the final is to keep your scores low. Best of luck to everybody. Our first category this afternoon is... Words. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second, and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Words with three of the same letter. Richard. Mm, on each board, we're going to show you seven definitions of words. Now, all of those words contain three of the same letter. You'll see those letters on the board, but you won't see any of the other letters. So what are these words, please? Seven on the way up, seven on the way down, 14 and all to have a go at home. Thank you very much. Let's reveal our first board of seven clues, and here they come. We've got South American country with the capital city, Montevideo. You, you, you. Paired thread-like structure in cells that carries genetic material, O, O, O. Term for a three-dimensional shape with 12 faces, D, D, D. Trees said to have roots that can bore through a planet in The Little Prince by Saint-Exupéry, B, B, B. Therapy, in which fine needles are inserted in the skin at specific points, U, U, U. Tiny protagonists of a series of fantasy novels by Mary Norton, R, R, R. And coastal Scottish city on the rivers Don and D. E, E, E. There we are. Nicola, welcome Hi. back. Lovely to have you with us again. Uh, tell us more about yourself. Um, I'm from Newcastle. I've known Vicky for about 25 years now. Um, we go off on a lot of adventures together. Like Where did you meet Vicky? At school. Yeah, so a so long what, so time ago, in the 90s. Did you do lots of homework? Um, I was supposed to. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure whether I actually did or not. <laughs> OK, now. Uh, Nicola, which of these words with their repeated letters are you going to go for? Um, there's a couple that I should probably remember, um, but I'm going to go with borrowers. You're going to go with... Tiny protagonists. OK, the tiny protagonists of the Mary Norton novels, the borrowers. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Borrowers. Borrowers is right. Look at that. Down that goes to 20. Very well done indeed, Nicola. 20 for borrowers. Lovely start. Yeah, tiny little people who live in um, people's houses. Human beings, they call human beings in the books. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Seb, welcome back. <laughs> Good to have you with us again. Uh, tell us more about yourself, Seb. Well, it's to uh, kind of wind down, I particularly enjoy sports, uh, kind of cricket, rugby, but also American football quite a lot. Sport, the Indianapolis Colts. What, what was it that drew you to the Indianapolis Colts? Uh, years ago, we had game Madden 08 when growing up, NFL game, and they had the best attack and worst defence on the game. So I thought that was a, a good and interesting compromise. And... I grew up with Madden 93. That's all you need to know about uh, me and Seb. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, Seb, what are you going to go for? Uh, for three-dimensional shape, I'll go dodecahedron. Dodecahedron. Let us see how many of our 100 people went with dodecahedron. 
It's good. <laughs> now, 20 is the only score we have at the moment. 38 for Go Decker Hinton. Well played, Seb. Yeah, it's got uh, all the sides are pentagons. I never quite understand the maths of why that would be, but the maths of those three-dimensional shapes are, uh, yeah. are extraordinarily yeah. complicated. They certainly are. Now, Tom. Hello. Welcome to Point. It's great to have you. Tell us all about yourself. I'm a student in Glasgow University, but I'm from Manchester, student at Glasgow. And what are you studying? I'm now? studying sociology and politics in my final year now. Very good indeed. And what are you hoping to do when that when that comes to its end? Well, that's a big question. Oh. Yeah. Not I always quite. imagined that it would be sometime in that third year that it would just become very clear what you had to do. Not quite, no. No, it doesn't. No, still no. No. Leave it on the table. Tom, the board. There's a few I know. It's just working out which one I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for the fifth one down, acupuncture. Acupuncture for the therapy with fine needles. Let's see how many of our 100 people said acupuncture. It's right. Down it goes to 61. Not bad. Nice done, Tom. Um, you ever had acupuncture? Yeah. I mean, I people, people quite swear like by it. it. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be terrified of it. But it's one of those ones that ever a very good friend of mine has MS, and he has it all the time. He says the one thing mm. that works for him. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Maz, welcome back. Hello. Um, tell us more about yourself, Maz. Yeah, I'm in academia, uh, doing computational chemistry. Um, but my hobby, well, I've only recently started doing it, is making my own music. I bought my own keyboard and I use my computer basically to record songs. That's exciting. Yeah. And you seem to have an unlimited number of tracks that you can you can yeah. add to that. I have maybe about 10 or 15, but they're very jingles. They're basically jingles. They're like maximum well, two fun. minutes. Yeah. Well, good for you, Maz. Thank you. Um, now, look, here's the board. Uh, do you want to fill in all those blanks for us? Uh, the top one is Uruguay. The second one probably has something to do with the ribosome. It's too long. I probably can't guess. The fourth one is Baobab. And the last one is Aberdeen. I'd go the fourth one, Baobab. OK, Boabab for the tree. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Boabab. It's right. Well, 61 is our high score and you passed that. 20 is our low score and you passed that. Wow, good bad, down five. Very well done indeed, man. It's a great score. Uh, well played, man. Best answer on the board, Baobab. Very nicely done. There's a baobab tree in Namibia that's over 1,200 years old. That's an exciting age. Of course it's baobab. I've spent my entire life calling it a baobab. Can't do that. Matt did it perfectly. You, you did. repeated his answer incorrectly. I know. <laughs> I know, because that's what I always thought it was. Thank you, Matt, for teaching oh, us something. Thank you. thank you. See, that's what homework should have been. I know. How do you pronounce baobab? Oh. Um, it's the best answer on the board, but we'll fill the others in. The South American country? Uruguay. Uruguay. Yeah. 43. Uh, now, you had a crack at this, uh, Maz, as a computational chemist, but it's actually, do you know this? Chromosome. Oh, well done chromosome. if you said that at home. 12 points. And the Scottish city? Is Aberdeen. Aberdeen. Yeah. And that would have scored you 24. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. Five, Maz. The best score of the past. Well done, you. Then we travel up to 20, where we find Nicola and Vicky. Then up to 38, where we find Seb and Ems. Then up to Tom and Ema on 61. Quite a high score there. But there we go. Ema, can we have a nice low score from you? That way we can get you into round two. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Uh, let's put seven more clues to words with three of the same letter in up on the board. Here they are. We have got green pigments which enable plants to use sunlight for photosynthesis. L, L, L. 1998 single, which was a UK number one for share. E, E, E. 2019 film starring Florence Pugh as a woman who attends a festival in rural Sweden. M, M, M. Semi-aquatic African mammal with a name meaning river horse. P, P, P. Title shared by songs from the musicals Bugsy Malone and Annie, O, O, O. Mexican state, after which a small breed of dog is named, H, H, H. And modern art museum with locations in New York and Bilbao, G, G, G. There we are. Uh, Margin, welcome back. Lovely to have you Thank with you. us again. Uh, tell us more about yourself, Margin. Hi, um, I'm a management consultant and in my free time I do enjoy um, playing football and tag rugby. Of the two, football, because quite often people go either football or rugby. Um, do, you have, do you have a preference or do you...? Uh, football, definitely. Football. Tag rugby I've only picked up recently, so, yeah, football. OK, very good. Now, Margin, you're on five. Yeah. Uh, 55 or less at this early stage would get you into the next round. 
I think I'm going to go with the bottom one. Yep. Um, and my answer is going to be Guggenheim. Guggenheim. Says Margin. Here is your red line. Let's see if we can get you below this red line with Guggenheim. Guggenheim, absolutely right. And you are through. Very well done. Comfortably done. 30 for Guggenheim takes your total up to 35. Yeah, there's all sorts of Guggenheims around the world now. Obviously, they have the one in the, in New York, which is the original. There's a Peggy Guggenheim Museum in Venice, which is lovely. And the Bill Bow one, probably the most famous European one. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then, Ema. Hi. Welcome. Tell us all about yourself, Ema. So I'm a medical student studying in Glasgow, but I'm originally from Derry, if you couldn't tell. Do you know, I, could, I, was, I was wondering that. Yes, I was wondering, yes. Ah, yes, I was thought... it New Zealand? Mm. Yes. Yes. Very yeah. good. Um, you're, so, medical school, what year are you in? I'm in my fourth year. Fourth of how many? Five. Of five? Yes. Are you having a lovely time there? Are I'm you enjoying having it? a lovely time and being kept very busy. Good. So, yeah, really enjoying it. Lovely. Excellent. Now, 61 is your score at the moment. You're, yeah. you're the high scorers. Mm -hmm. We need something low. Yeah, I think I know most of them. Um, but it's just picking out the right one again. I think I'll go for the green pigments, which enable plants to use sunlight for photosynthesis, which is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, says Ema. No red line for you as you're the high scorers at the moment. Let's see if we can remedy that with chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is right. Down goes to 29. Not bad at all. Taking your total up to a lovely round 90. Yeah, well played. Game on now. Um, not all plants contain chlorophyll, and they've all got to have energy, but some mm. parasitically attach themselves to other plants nearby, to the roots, and steal their energy. Just nick theirs. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Ems, Hi. welcome back. Lovely to have you with us again. Remind us about yourself, Ems. Uh, so I'm about to start a job in a bank, but um, in my free time, I like to write. I also like playing video games. Uh, a lot of my writing is inspired by some of the video games I play. So what sort of form do you write in? So I like to you... write novels and short novels. stories. One of my short stories has just been accepted for publishing in a small magazine, which is really cool. OK, excellent. Well, good for you. Uh, now, Ems, you are on 38. 51 or less gets you through. So I'm going to hope that the Florence Pugh film uh, not many people have seen, even though it's really good. And that's Midsummer. Midsummer, says Ems. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Midsummer. Here's your red line. Midsummer's absolutely right. And it gets you through. Look at that, Ems. Very well done. <laughs> Down it goes to eight. That's fantastic. <laughs> Taking your total up to 46. Yeah, very well played. It's a terrific film. Very scary. Yeah. It's really It's like, kind of gross. Creepy. Scary. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, sort of Wicker Man-ish. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it to, to virtually anyone. But, uh, <laughs> but a good film. If you like it, you'll if you like it. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. Thank you very much indeed. Vicky, welcome back. Thank you. Great to have you with us again. Tell us more about yourself, Vicky. So, as Nicholas said, we're from Newcastle. Um, I work in a bank and in my free time, I'm a bit of a musical fan. Are you? Yes. What is your favourite musical? Jersey Boys. Yes, wow. I should think so. Yeah. And just such amazing songs. All the Frankie Valley songs. Yeah. Brilliant. Good stuff. Now, Vicky, 20 is your score at the moment. 69 or less gets you into the next round. Nice. Uh, do you want to talk us through the board? So, I think the 1998 single by Cher is Believe. The semi-aquatic African mammal is Hippopotamus. The title shared by songs from musicals will be Tomorrow. And I think the Mexican state is probably Chihuahua. I'm going to go with um, Tomorrow for the title shared by songs from the musicals. OK, Tomorrow says, Vicky, you've taken us comprehensively through the board. Let's hope you've chosen wisely. Here is your red line. Will Tomorrow get us below that red line? It's right. Ah, there we are. Look, round two beckons. We had nothing to worry about. Down it goes. Great answer, 13. Takes your total up to 33. Yeah, it did that perfectly. Uh, got all the answers right and chose the one with the lowest score, so well done. And in fact, the lowest two scores on the board on those last two guesses as well, so very well played. Believe for share would have scored you 32. Hippopotamus would have scored you 53. And Chihuahua would score 47. 
Thank you very much. That brings us to the end of our first round. And it means we have to say goodbye to our first pair, Ema and Tom. I'm afraid that's you on your first appearance on the show. However, you'll be back. Yes. You'll be back. We can take it through to the to the head to head and beyond next time. Thank you very much, Ema and Tom. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Well, there we are, down to three pairs. Well done, everybody. We made it through round one. Well done, Maz. You came out through that as our lowest individual scorer. And well done, Vicky and Nicola. You came through as our lowest joint scorers. So, uh, fantastic. Good work. And just at seven M's, well done. <laughs> just well done. Um, best of luck to everybody for round two. Our category is... Cinema. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Actors in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Richard. Um, yeah, we're going to show you a board now of 16 faces, all of whom appeared in uh, one of those movies or, or both of those movies. You just have to uh, give us the most obscure name you can find, please. Thank you very much indeed. So, yes, we're going to put this board up, 16 faces on it. They'll stay for the whole round. We won't be changing that halfway through, OK? You just have to shout out the name of anyone you recognise from this board. And here comes the board. Yes, interesting. Your kid's probably a bit young to have taken you to... Uh, oh, so I've seen every they, single one of the Marvel they love films them. with Sonny. My boy. I mean, literally, he just... They, there's some brilliant just, ones. And there are some brilliant ones. I've sat through one that I probably wouldn't watch again. But, yeah, they, yeah. Um, there we are. Well, listen, let's play this round. Uh, Nicola, who are you going to shout out about I'm going to go with Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas, says yeah. Nicola. Let's see how many of our 100 said Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas is absolutely right. That goes down to 52. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, he plays Hank Pym in uh, Adventures Endgame. It's also, uh, that character's also in the Ant-Man uh, movie, which is also a very good, very good film. Mm. Anyway, there we go. Thank you. Uh, now, Seb. Yes. Fortunately, it's quite a good board for me. I could uh, tell that. I saw there was a look that you shared yes. with Anne. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, trying to judge the best one, but I'll go for Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton, says Seb. Let's see how many of our 100 said Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton is right. Well, 52 is the only score we have at the moment, and you pass that with Tilda Swinton. Down to seven. Very well done indeed. Nicely done, yes. Yeah, she plays the ancient one in uh, Avengers Endgame. Thank you. Uh, Maz, who are you going to go for? Mm, I'm trying to think. I know a few of them. I need to think who would probably be a good option. Um, I'll go for uh, Robert Redford. Robert Redford. Let's find out how many of our 100 said Robert Redford. Robert Redford is right. 52 remains the high score, and you pass it. 33 for Robert Redford. Yeah, and he plays Alexander Pierce in Endgame, and that character first appeared in Captain America Winter Soldier, which is a very good film. There we go. Thank you very much. OK, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores before we head on. Over seven is the best score of the past. Uh, Seb and Ems, well done to you. Then 33 is where we find Maz and Margin. And then 52 is where we find Nicola and Vicky. So, yes, you're a little bit ahead. So, Vicky, good luck with finding a nice low-scoring answer in the next pass. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? There we are, Margin. All of these actors appear in Avengers films. Who on earth are they? I know some of them. I think the one I'm going to go for is Brie Larson. OK, Brie Larson says, Margin, here is your red line. Let's see if we can get you close to or even below this red line with Brie Larson. Brie Larson is right. Very well done indeed. That goes down to five. That's a great score, taking your total up to 38. Yeah, very well done. She's Captain Marvel uh, in Endgame, Brie Larson. Uh, thank you very much. Now then, Ems. Hi. Ems, <laughs> looks like you're enjoying this round every bit as much as Seb is. Uh, uh, kind of-ish. <laughs> um, I'm not a massive Avengers fan, but I, 
I think her name's Letitia Wright. Letitia Wright. OK, let's find out. Here's your red line. Is that Letitia Wright? It's right. Very well done indeed, Ems. <gasps> it's absolutely right and gets you through and it goes down to three. Very well done indeed, taking your total up to ten. Good work. That's some force of character right there, Ems. Very well done, yes. He's uh, Shuri in both those movies and, of course, in, uh, in Black Panther. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then, Vicky. Vicky, I'm afraid to say you are the high scorers, even now, but do you want to talk us through that board at all? Uh, I think the top line is Michelle Pfeiffer, I think Chris Pine. His name's gone right out of my head. I can't remember who the first one is. Um, but the one I'm going to go for, I think, is Tom Holland on the second row. Tom Holland. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Tom Holland. No red line, I'm afraid, is your other high scorers. Tom Holland is right. Down goes to 13. Not a bad score. Takes your total up to 65. Yeah, lovely way to leave us. Tom Holland is Spider-Man, of course. Um, let's go through the board, shall we? Top row. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr., 36 points. Uh, next to him, absolutely right, Michelle was Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. Looking remarkably like Cameron Diaz. A little bit. Fact. 27 points for her. Do you know the next gentleman? It's not Chris Pine. It's Chris, Chris someone. Evans. Chris Evans, absolutely right. Um, you can hear him on Virgin Radio every morning. Six points for him. <laughs> uh, one of the joint best answers on the board, this next yes. gentleman. Yes, I can't remember what his name Lovely is. Lovely actor, Josh yeah. Brolin. Josh Brolin. Will have scored two points. Um, next row down. Doesn't massively look like a Scarlett Johansson. Is it? Yeah. Yes, I can see. Yes, I suppose. Doesn't... Yes, I wouldn't have... 22 points for Scarlett Johansson. Um, the other best answer on the board... William Hurt. William Hurt. Yep, two points. Next to William Hurt. Is, um, um, Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow, <laughs> correct. 33. Next to Gwyneth Paltrow... Is Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. Would have scored you four. Another Chris coming down here. See, I can't remember his name. Chris Hemsworth. There we go. Thank you. Uh, he would have scored you 24. He's Thor, of course. And Ant-Man himself. Uh, Paul Rudd. Thank you. Would have scored you 11 points. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Well, that brings us to the end of our second round. It means we have to say goodbye to another pair. Vicky and Nicola, I'm sorry it's you we say goodbye to. You'll be back next time. Next time, we'll take it right the way through to the final. Good. Look forward to that. Thanks so much, Vicky and Nicola. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. Congratulations, Seb and Ems, Margin and Maz. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands still at £1,000. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, we now have a chance to boost that jackpot a little bit by seeing if we can find just a couple of pointless answers. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many tributaries of the Thames as they could, Richard. Yep, we're going to show you uh, six names on the board. Four of them will be tributaries of the Thames, two of those pointless answers. There'll be two incorrect answers as well, so tributaries or fibutaries. Nice. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Here comes the list of six potential tributaries. Vole, Key, Sharwell, Goulding, Windrush, Crane. Sharwell's definitely a river. I think yeah. that's around Oxfordshire-ish place. Um, um, I don't think it would be Windrush. No. No, that's I think Vol, Vol sounds like a, something. A that would no, it wouldn't be River, because River Vol is an, a yeah. furry okay. thing. Yeah. yeah. So okay. maybe it's not... I don't know. River Golding. OK, so seven M's. What are you going to go for? Okay. Yeah, we'll go Sherwell. OK, you're going to go Sherwell. Let's see if that is a pointless tributary of the Thames. Sherwell. Eight for Sharwell, I'm afraid. Um, Margin and Matt, over to you. What are you going to go for? It won't be pointless. Okay, you um, I think uh, we're going to go for Key. Okay, Key. Shall we find out if Key is a pointless Thames tributary? Key is right. And it's pointless. Very well done indeed, Margin and Maz. 
Yeah, very, yeah, very well played. Uh, yeah, the classic error of going for one you've heard of there. It really works. Sometimes it does, to be fair. Let's get rid of the other scoring answer. Uh, Windrush, the Empire yeah. Windrush, which is the, the ship was named after the tributary, uh, funnily enough, would have scored you two points. I'll give you an incorrect answer, and that is Goulding, because Ellie Goulding had a number one hit with River. Um, so Vole and Crane, one of those is a tributary and one of those is a, is a fake. Let's go with Crane. I think it's the, it's the pointless. So you think Crane is the other pointless answer. So are the pointless answers Key and Crane? Yay! Oh, very well done. Well done if you said that at home as well. Uh, there's a River Mole, but not a River Vole. That's a there tributary. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well done, you managed to find a pointless answer, which means we can add £250 to the jackpot, so it will now stand at £1,250. But who will be paying for it? Let's find out in the head-to-head. -head. Now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot of £1,250. Here comes your first question, and it concerns... Bird standing on one leg, Richard. Yeah, five pictures now of birds standing on one leg. We'll give you alternate letters of their names as well, but what are these one-leg standing birds, please? <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the birds. Bring on the one-leg standing birds. We've got A C I S R P P N U N. <laughs> Let's just look at that for the rest of the show. That's just lovely. Oh. Careful. B R D H. N. C. O S E C T H R. D. M O H N. Know what he's about to do. <laughs> and E. B A K A L D G D I. There we are. Ah, so, Seb and Ems, you're our low-scoring couples. You get to go first. Uh, I'm going to invent a bird for E uh, <laughs> without the scientific expertise to justify such a statement. Uh, but black, bold, goading. <laughs> the black, bold, goading. If this is right. OK, <laughs> Margin and Maz, talk us through that board if you can. What's, what do you think, E? <laughs> Um, A could be, I don't know, clip strip penguin. B could be red shine. <laughs> red shine. We'll go with red shine, but red it's shine. probably not. Red shine. Yeah. OK, this is fun. <laughs> uh, so we have uh, the black bald goading and <laughs> the red shine. Uh, Seb and Ems went first with their one. <laughs> the black bald goading. Let's see if that's right for E. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, which means, Martin and Maz, you, you merely have to be correct with Redshine to win the point. But no, I'm afraid you're not. <laughs> what? This has gone well, uh, which means after one question, I'm afraid it's nil-nil. We'll start with the, uh, with the biggest scorer. D um, is the Moorhen. Moorhen uh, would have scored you 54 points. C. Uh, C is an oyster catcher. Oyster catcher. And that would have scored you 49. Then, uh, not the red shine. Uh, red shank. Red shank. And that would have scored you 14. Then they get slightly trickier, unless you've heard of this penguin. Chin strap. Chin strap is a penguin, guess, yeah. But it is not the are. clip strip, it's the chin strap. Uh, 10 points. And this is the best answer. Certainly it's black tailed. Is black tailed Godwit. That's a Godwit. Godwit would have scored you five Godwit. points. Um, there we are. Thank you very much indeed. Well, after one question, I'm afraid it's nil-nil. Here comes your second question. Margin and Maz, you get to answer this first. Uh, the second question is all about... Edited female authors, Richard. Uh, yeah, we're going to show you now the names of five uh, female writers, but we've removed the first and last letters from their first and second names. So who are these people? Just from the middle of each of their names. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our female authors. Here they come. We've got Y-L-V-I-L-A-T, 1932. O-N-O-R-R-I-S-O, 1931. G-A-T-H-H-R-I-S-T-I, 1890. A-R-H-E-L-L-E, 1797. And I-R-G-I-N-I-O-O-L, 1882. Those dates are. are obviously their, their dates of birth. Their dates of birth. There we are. So Marjan and Maz will go first. It's extraordinary how difficult that is. The top one, Sylvia Platt. 
Sylvia Plath, say margin and Maz. Now, Seb and Ems, do you want to talk us through that board? Um, so the one after that, I think, is Toni Morrison, Agatha Christie. And then the bottom one's Virginia Woolf. I think we'll go Toni Morrison? Yeah. Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison. So we've got Sylvia Plath and we've got Toni Morrison. Margin and Maz have gone for Sylvia Plath. Let's see how many of our 100 said that for the first one. Sylvia Plath is right. Down it goes to 15. Good score. Seb and Ems have gone for the wonderful Tony Morrison. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Tony Morrison is right. And it wins you the point. Very well done indeed. Six for Tony Morrison. And it means after two questions, you're up 1 0, Seven Ems. That's more like it, isn't it? Uh, well done. Two good answers there. And actually, the best answer on the board, Tony Morrison, um, as well. Gath Huristai. Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie. She would have scored you 48. Uh, next one down. Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley. Yeah, well done. Would have scored you nine. And the bottom one? Uh, Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf. She would have scored you 34. I worked out my name is Itchar Smar. <laughs> nice. It's a good name, actually. Nice. It is good. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, right, here comes your third question. Margin and Maz, you have to win this to stay in the game, but it's Seb and Ems who get to answer it first, so good luck. Our third question is all about weddings and marriages, Richard. Yep, simply find clues that relate to weddings or marriages in some way. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five clues, and here they come. We've got Austrian composer of the comic opera The Marriage of Figaro, which premiered in 1786. Name given to the notice, read out on three successive Sundays in a parish church announcing an intended marriage. British singer who had a UK top 10 single in 1985 with White Wedding. Fashion designer who created the wedding dress of the then Princess Elizabeth in 1947. And the Italian Renaissance artist of the 1562 to 63 painting, The Wedding Feast at Cana. There we are. Right. Seb and Ems will go first. What are you thinking? Uh, we're going to go for the middle one. British singer who had a top UK 10 single. Um, Billy Idol. Billy Idol, say Seb and M's. Now, Margin and Maz. Do you want to talk us through that board? Mm -hmm. I think the top one maybe Mozart. Name given to the notice. I don't know the second yeah. one. Fashion designer who created the wedding dress of the then Princess Elizabeth. I have no idea. Um, maybe Yves Saint Laurent. One, maybe Yves Saint Laurent, maybe. Italian Renaissance artist, um, probably Da Vinci, maybe. Is around that year. Um, Michael, no. Michelangelo, maybe not. Michelangelo. I don't know. You decide. Let's go for the um, for Mozart. Yeah, Mozart. Okay. Okay, you're going to say Mozart for the top yeah. one. So we have Billy Idol versus Mozart. Uh, Seb and Ems <laughs> have gone for the White Wedding. Uh, singer of that, Billy Idol. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. I have no idea who was better. Here's right. That goes down to 31. Meanwhile, Margin and Maz have gone for Mozart for the top one, the composer of The Marriage of Figaro. How many of our 100 said Mozart? Mozart is right. Got to beat 31. And it does. There we are. 15. That scores. It means you're back in the game, Margin and Maz. And after three questions, it's one all. Shall we fill the rest of these in? Um, the Notice? The Bands. The Bands, yeah. Uh, it's the biggest scorer up there as well. Which scored you 34. Do you know the fashion designer? Did I say Hardy Amy's? No. Norman Hartnell. Norman Hartnell, Norman of course Hartnell. it was. Yeah. Would have scored you five. Um, and the Italian Renaissance art is not one of the obvious ones. Uh, Veronese. Veronese. Well done if you said that. It's a pointless answer. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now it's time for question four. This doesn't <laughs> happen very often. Um, and whoever wins this one goes through to the final place for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Here comes our fourth question. And it's all about Liam Gallagher. That's nice. Richard? Yeah, the exact midpoint between Mozart and Billy Idol. Uh, five <laughs> clues, facts about uh, Liam Gallagher. Very best of luck. OK, let's reveal the clues. We've got... Industrial City in the northwest of England, where he was born. Hertfordshire Venue, where Oasis played two sold-out shows in 1996. He named his eldest son after this member of the Beatles. Band he formed in 2009 that released the album's different gear, Still Speeding, and B and the title of his 2017 solo album that debuted at number one in the UK album charts. There we go. Now then, Margin and Maz, you get to go first. 
The only one I know for sure is the top one. Maybe the second from bottom? Yeah. Um... I know that one as well, maybe. Okay. Okay. Stone roses? Stone roses, say Margin and Maz. Now, Seb and Ems, do you want to talk us through that board? So it's Manchester's the top one. Probably go George, I guess there's a one in four chance of that. <laughs> uh, and I can't remember the bottom two for sure, but as I think it's not Stone Roses for the band, I'm going to trump it safe and I think Manchester, Manchester. Industrial City. Okay, yeah. Manchester, you're going to say. So we've got Stone Roses versus Manchester. Margin and Maz are saying Stone Roses was the, the band he formed after Oasis. No, I'm afraid not Stone Roses, which means Seb and Ems, you merely have to be correct with Manchester and you will win this point and go through to the final. Absolutely right. Yes, Manchester is the city where he was born. 68 is what it scores, but it's crucially correct. And it means after four questions, you're through to the final 2-1. Yeah, very cannily played. Uh, nicely done. Yes, Stone Roses, a long time before uh, Oasis. And no Gallagher's in there. Um, the Hertfordshire venue? Nebworth. Nebworth, yep. Would have scored 14 points. His eldest son is called? Lennon. Lennon, yes. And named after John Lennon. Would have scored 35. Um, the band? They're called BDI. BDI, yeah, BE being the initials there. That would have scored 11 and the solo album. That I don't know. As you were, as you were. And that's the best answer up there, would have scored five. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid it's Margin and Maz. You'll be back for one last shot mm. uh, next time. Let's hope we can take it one step further and get you into the final. But meanwhile, thank you very much for playing Margin mm -hmm. and Maz. Back for seven M's, it is now time for the pointless final. Congratulations, Seven M's. You've seen off all the competition <laughs> and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. There we are, um, in some style, I might add. You now have a chance to win the pointless jackpot, and at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,250. Well, look, here we are in the, the final round. Uh, what do you want to see come up? Um, I personally would like Taylor Swift. Uh, Polygon.com's 100 best games of the decade. That would be great. Oh. London Underground. NFL or Welsh politics for me. <laughs> OK, well, listen, any of these things could come up. You never know. Today's choices look like this. We've got the Roosevelts, small rappers, art in the 21st century and decades of golf majors. What do we think? I think we're probably going to have the best bet with small rappers. Okay. Probably. Oh, it's pop music. Whatever you want to go for, then. We'll go small rappers. Small rappers. OK, very best of luck. We are looking for any UK top 40 hits by one of the following, please, up to the beginning of December 2020. Uh, any UK top 40 hit by Lil Kim, by Tiny Temper, or by Tinchy Strider. So according to the official charts company, any UK top 40 hits by any of those three. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, uh, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win the jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. So, first... No, number one by Tinchy Strider. Okay. Yeah, uh, um, Pass Out was by Tiny Temper. Yes. There was another did one. did Fit in the Stars, but that was quite big, so if we can think of another yeah, one. Yeah, but people don't remember. That's true. Uh, um, he did another big one. Can you remember struck. what the lyrics were? I will try in the next 40 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so... I don't think we've got anything on the little Kim. No. Uh, um, I think I'm unlikely to remember the Tinchy Strider. Oh. I know Tiny Tampa did a remix of Don't Trust Me with 303, but I don't know if it charted. Yeah. Probably not. But uh, I don't know, maybe maybe it did. Like top forty. People mm. loved Tiny Temper back then and they loved 303. Okay. Well, well it's worth having a pun. It's on worth that. having Ten a pun. Yeah. In which case we'll go let's go pass pass out and number one and don't trust. Okay. Me. Yeah. Okay, sounds like you've got your three answers and there's the minute finished. So perfect timing. What would you like to give me? So Pass out for Tiny Temper. Pass out. Uh, number one with Tinchy Strider with N Dubs. Number one. Uh, and then. Don't trust me for Tiny Temper and with 303. Don't trust me. Of yeah. those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? 
Number one with Tinchy Okay, Stryer. number one we'll put last. Least likely to be pointless. Probably pass out. Probably pass out, Pass yeah. out and then don't trust me, put in the middle. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order and here they are. We've got pass out, don't trust me, and number one. Well, first question is what would you like to do if you won that jackpot with this? Uh, we've got this thing called a National Treasure Road Trip, which we've lovingly uh, coined. It's uh, where we go from Washington, D.C. to New York City, um, like they do in the Nicolas Cage film, National Treasure. Excellent. Yeah. So that's what you'll do, £1,250. Yeah, £1, yeah I'll put some money yes. towards that, Put yeah. to excellent use. OK, well, let's hope one of these answers wins it for you. Pass out your first answer. In this case, we're looking for any Tiny Temper UK Top 40 single. Let's see if it's right. Let's see if it's pointless for £1,250. Pass out. It's right. It just has to go all the way down to zero. Which it might. And you can win <laughs> that jackpot of £1,250. Pass out. Takes us down now through the teens, just to 19. OK. <laughs> Let's turn to your next answer, which is Don't Trust Me. In this case, we're looking for, again, tiny temper UK top 40 singles. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Don't Trust Me. Oh, no. Not Don't Trust Me. I didn't trust it either, actually, to be <laughs> honest. There it was. But, yeah. OK, let's put your final answer to the test. Number one. In this case, we're with Tinchy Strider. Let's see how many of our 100 people said number one. Well, it's right. If it's pointless, it'll win you £1,250. We went all the way down to 19 with pass out. Don't trust me was incorrect. Down we go, passing 19. Still going down through the team. Oh, to nine. Well, that's not bad. You found one lovely single-figure score. Um, but I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all-important yeah. lovely big round score that would have won you the jackpot. So um, I'm afraid you don't win that. But you'd get to win today's trophy, so fantastic work on that score. Um, and being great having you on. You played incredibly well, Seb and Anne. Yeah, very well done. You gave yourself a chance there, and that's all you can ask in that round, isn't it? Um, yeah, don't trust me, it's a good answer. The 303 uh, original was a top 40 hit, but not, mm. the, um, not the remix, I'm afraid. Written in the stars, which you attempted to go for, would have scored you five points. Let's start, shall we, with Lil' Kim. Only four pointless answers here. Can't hold us down. Uh, that was with Christina Aguilera in the air tonight with Phil Collins, no matter what they say, and the jump off all of those pointless answers. On to Tiny Temper. Children of the Sun. Uh, Love and Not a Fighter we did with Labyrinth. Number one single, Not Letting Go, with uh, Jess Glynn. Pointless answer. Text from your ex. Um, it also could have had Crazy Stupid Love, uh, his hit with uh, Cheryl. You could have had Eyes Wide Shut as well and Simply Unstoppable. All of those were pointless answers. Well done if you said one of them. And let's take a look at Tinchy Strider now. In my system, lights on, off the record, and you're not alone off the records with uh, Calvin Harris. You also could have had Bring It to Let It Rain a Second Chance. Very well done if you've got any of those at home, and unlucky. What a lovely show today. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you, Seven M's. I'm sorry you didn't win the jackpot. That'll roll over onto the next show when we'll be playing for £2,250. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>